Exactly 44 weeks ago, I uh, lined up on my TT Super Sport bike on them lines just about over there and uh, did what would be my last close roads lap of the TT course, or I say last lap. It was actually only about three quarters of a lap because I got 26 miles round and uh, it all went wrong. Crashed the bike, smashed into a wall, broke both my legs, like entirely broken, both tibs and fibs both femurs uh, and spent a couple of months in hospital where I had umpteen operations one of which was to uh, remove the bottom of my right leg so once I came out of hospital got a prosthetic leg back on my feet now uh, albeit, albeit um, yeah one of them's prosthetic so life's taken a bit of a life life took a bit of a turn but I've uh, Never been one to let things get me down too much or stop me doing the things that I want to do. So I thought I'd uh, come back to the Isle of Man with a different triumph. Um, hopefully one that I'll look after a little bit better this time. And do some laps of the TT course to try and uh, dispel any demons that I may or may not have. So let's take it for a spin. Time to get back on the horse. It's a beautiful day in the Isle of Man. In the Isle of Man or on the Isle of Man? Which is more uh, correct? This is the TT paddock. For anyone who hasn't been here. Uh, or anyone who has been here. It does look a lot different uh, during TT week, obviously. Anyway, let's do it. Last time I was here, this didn't really, uh, this didn't go to plan. Oh, it's a little bit dirty. I, I need to give it a, need to give it a clean. Last time I was here, I set off on a 675 super sport bike. This time we are on a uh, street triple, which, if you ask me, is a fantastic bike to um, wean me back into motorcycling. Oh no, let's let's just wait. Let's not rush. Back on the Isle of Man TT course. Exactly 44 weeks to the day later. That's funny, isn't it? Funny how things happen. TT pits. They're all the fuel standy uppy things. Um, right, we're back on a bike. Uh, do you know what? It's. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been thinking about what's it going to be like when I get back on a bike? Is it going to be. You know, am I going to have all these emotions? Is it going to be. Am I going to struggle? It's, it's alright. It's fine. I, I think maybe that comes from. A lot of years of riding bikes and crashing bikes. I mean, this might have been, might have been one of the. Well, probably, probably was the biggest crash I've had. Certainly, the biggest injuries I've ever had. But um, getting on a bike after a big crash isn't isn't something that's really new to me, to be honest. It was because it was always inevitable. I never worried that it wasn't going to happen. I never thought, oh, will I be able to ride again? What 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 will life be like? You know, I've seen. I've seen what people can do with prosthetic limbs and um, you can still do the things you want to do. I, I think you can still do the things you want to do. Certain things are going to be a little bit more difficult. But to be honest, this is... Actually physically riding the bike is... is way easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've got control over the brake lever, the rear brake. You know, that's, that's me using the rear brake. How do you like that? Do a little skid. I think we've got AB, well, we have got ABS on, so we're not skidding, but... Um, yeah, so it's my right leg that I'm missing, so... Uh, it's, it, yeah, rear brake territory, but... I don't, obviously don't have as much control as I had before, because I'm missing the ankle joint, the prosthetic foot and the prosthetic leg. Oh, scamba gambler. Is uh, obviously at a fixed, a, a fixed angle, um, so you don't have the... You don't have the, the quite the control and the flexibility, but to be honest, I feel I still feel like I've got a reasonable amount of control. Um, it's a bit like it's if you've ever ridden a you've ever ridden a a, 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 bike, a motorbike with a a big chunky motocross boot on, and you, so you don't have much. You're you're a bit sort of your foot's a bit numb. You don't really feel what's going on quite so much and you and you and everything's a bit fixed so you haven't got the ankle movement um that's what it feels like really quarter bridge 
Go on then, go on then. I can't actually remember coming round here for the last time after the crash. Uh, sorry, before the crash. I, I did four laps that night, so I can't remember which one was my last one. Incidentally, I don't really know what happened when I crashed. I think I've took the front going into Joey's, which is a, like a fast right-hander. But I can't remember it. I think possibly what happened, um, and I hate myself, hate myself for saying this, but I think possibly what happened was um, just a, 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 the tyre cooled off a little bit because I know I wouldn't have been pushing mega hard because you know the 600 I was riding wasn't really fast anyway, so I wasn't. It wasn't like I was, you know, pushing for a decent result. I was never going to get one anyway. It was more just track time, uh, so I wouldn't have been kicking the ass out of it. I wonder if I've just been caught out with a cold front tyre as the evening, because it would have been, you know, that would have been my fourth lap of the evening, evening practice, kind of, you, you, you know, you're talking maybe nine o'clock at night, something like that. I've been doing this, or I've been racing bikes too long to be get to get caught out with a cold tyre, but I think that might, might, you know, might have been what happened. We've got the uh, street triple in sport mode today. We are on a racetrack after all. So these signs here, it means you can, means you can open it up, but I don't want to go too fast because um, that's dangerous. And I'm, I'm, I'm being safe from now on. I'm a safe rider because accidents happen when you go too fast and when you're not careful. So that's me. I'm a changed man. I'm not taking as many risks now. I thought a lot over the last. Um, well, 44 weeks really. Um, yeah, or the last six months, I've thought a lot about the the risks that I've taken in my life. Um, I've taken some scary risks. Some of the things I think about that I've done, I think, God, that could have easily gone one of two ways. So, it's a fucking stone miracle I'm alive, to be quite honest. And I want to keep it that way. So, I'm going to be less reckless. My, uh, girlfriend, I say girlfriend, she's, uh, we're getting married at the end of the year, um, she's my fiancé really, but I don't, I can't bring myself to say fiancé, because you sound like a knobhead, don't you, but, um, she says I'm reckless, she says I'm too reckless, everything I do, I'm reckless, so, I'm going to try and, try and be less reckless, speaking of reckless, I had, um, I do remember, I had, uh, this is just, we've come out of uh, Glen Vine there, Balagheri, I had a massive wheelie coming out of there. I think the wind, this is back last year when I was ready, it was on the big bike um, in, in practice week. I came out of the wet, came out of there and the wind, the bike wheelied a little bit and the wind got underneath it and just woof like that. Ooh, scary. A lot of people have said to me, you know, oh, I wonder what it's going to be like first time back on a bike and, well, no, it's funny, it doesn't feel, it doesn't really feel like I've been away. You know, it's been what 10, 10 or 11 months or something. I just, it does. It doesn't feel like I've had that long a layoff. You know, it, it, it doesn't feel like that big a deal. It's maybe, maybe it's maybe it should be a big deal. I don't know, but it doesn't. It just you don't forget how to ride a bike, do you? I really like comes the Iron Man. I know it all. I know it all went wrong, and yeah, I ended up in a bit of a mess. But. It's still a beautiful place. Still filled with great people. Still great roads. Road a day for a daydream. These are a couple of scary corners. Mega, mega, mega fast. That one there is flat out. And this one here, you can probably do it flat out if you're a better rider than me, but I don't think I ever managed it. I might have done it once or twice on a 600, but there's, uh, there's no way I'm getting around there on a big bike without rolling the throttle. Oh, that's a big, big balls corner on that one. I can still put either one of my feet on the floor and and uh, remain reasonably well balanced, which is handy. Uh, I didn't know if I didn't know if I'd struggle in that regard, but mate, yeah, it's fine. Put the old prozzy down on the floor and holds me up, no bother. This bit's one of the um, one of the most technical sections of the TT course, and one of the bits that I just really struggled with. Here all the way to, um, oh, what do you call it, Cronky Voddy Strait, by Christ God. Um, yeah, here all the way to Cronky Voddy, I just, it, it's, 
it's like one massive section that you've got to just piece together you get one bit wrong and it fucks the next five corners up really really tricky and it's undulating like this as well you've got to turn the bike get on the brakes change direction or all, all when you're going over pumps and jumps and and everything's blind you can't see around the corners tricky bit of uh tricky bit of racetrack i mean this is beautiful isn't it look i've never really stopped to or slowed down to look at the the views around here the trees and the little trickle stream down the bottom i kept getting this corner wrong at the tt last year because there used to be um there used to be a great big telegraph pole just there i think that's the bottom of it there or maybe, maybe even was a tree and it was all wrapped with ivy and i used to use that as my kind of aim point before i tipped in and they chopped it down so um yeah i just i just kept running wide and missing my apex one thing i'm finding handy with the uh street triple is the the, the foot pegs are, are quite low which is uh helpful because my my knees still don't have a full range of kind of bendy bendy movement in them that's the right way to express it they're just a bit stiff still so i think i mean i wouldn't i'd struggle getting my feet on the pegs of a, of a sports bike or anything that's got more of a kind of crouched up position but these are uh yeah, these are bob on feet just sit on them happily slow down slow down you maniac Oop. foot fell off the peg then this is kirk michael this is somewhere where i'm desperate to come and watch it's one of the it's one of the most bonkers place to it, it, to actually race a bike um through because and i'm sure you've heard people saying it before the, the speed that you're going through it, it almost makes the it almost makes the the walls come in it feels like the buildings are getting tighter and tighter and tighter towards you and everything's closing in we just gotta you just gotta pin the throttle ignore it yeah 30, 30 mile an hour road and you you know you're doing five times the speed of that through here absolutely nuts i mean that's why this place is one of the many many reasons this place is so special work like it's, it, it's, it's, i'm lost for work how, how can you how can you explain the 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 enormity of that the the yeah, I don't have the I don't have the words. It's just the fucking coolest thing. Flat out through a village. Two hundred and thirty horsepower superbikes. Flat out. You should see the things I see when I'm cleaning windows. This is another one of my favourite bits. Mega fast bit, but if you get it just right, you keep the throttle pinned. It's kind of hedge curb, hedge curb, white line hedge, little jump. It's uh, it's a bit a bit of the course that's if you get it right it's really rewarding. That wouldn't be helpful because that's right on the racing line. Dead pheasant or whatever it was. I actually sucked a uh, 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 big sparrow or blackbird or something into my um, into the air vent on the ZX10 a few years ago at the TT. It was lap one of the Superstock race, and uh, I didn't realise it had happened. I just, something felt a bit off with the bike. It just didn't feel like it had the power that I wanted it and, and I, I found myself really trying to stretch the cables to get the thing to to get the, the thing to shift um, we ended up nearly running out of fuel uh, because of it because I think what had happened is the, the bird's gone in there it's just sapped a bit of power so I'm having to keep the throttle pinned even even more than before and it was using a bit more fuel because of it pulled out it was all in bits and pieces and all sucked into the airbox stunt like fuck as well Whoa, christ alive blast bridge this is i'm um you'll see a lot of people doing massive jumps over blast bridge i never um i never tended to get a lot of air i just i just thought you the, the amount of time you're gonna gain by by getting a, doing a big jump going really fast doing a big jump i just don't think it was worth the risk because the damage you know you can lose a chain you can bend a wheel you can snap a foot peg so there you go i didn't always take risks my risks were calculated just not always calculated very well 
I, one thing I have noticed um, getting back on a bike after a, a reasonable spell not riding, I, I feel like I'm stiffening up quicker. You know that, you know that way where you get where you've been on a bike for, you know, been in the saddle for I don't know, 150 miles, and your legs just start stiffening up and your ass goes a bit numb. I'm getting that up, getting that already, and I've not. I don't know how far I've come. Well, I'll tell you how far I've come. Where are we now? About how far around the course are we? Just over halfway, maybe 18 miles. I'll tell you in a minute. There'll be a mile marker. Oh, legs! Yeah, just I feel like I'm ready for a stretch. Already. Oh, there you go. Look, 19 miles in. This is another one of them big straights. Sulby straight this is. Every now and then I used to um, I used to run right down this side of the curve, flat out. Because everyone would be sat drinking their, drinking their beers and eating ice creams just there. <laughs> so you go right close to them and they're all jumping back, spilling the beers. Oh, dearie, dearie me. It's the little things, isn't it? I don't know how much I'll miss racing at the TT. Um, I think when the event's on and I can see all the lads coming in, you know, going out for the laps and coming back and we've all got smiles on the face and it's all going well. I think I'll miss it a bit, but I don't know, I, I almost think I've, I feel like I've been there, done that now. I'm ready to do something else. I still want to be part of the event in one way or another and I still want to come and watch, but I'm, I'm all right about, I'm all right about it, you know what? I did think at one point that, you know, if, if something forced me to give up racing the TT, it'd be the worst thing in the world and I'd never be able to, never be able to get over it, but I think I'm already over it. I absolutely love doing it, it was the best thing in the world, but yeah, I've, I've done it now. And to be honest, like, I don't know how, I was never going to win one, I was, wasn't really fast enough to, to be right up at the front and you know even if I was good enough to be to be racing with the lads right at the front I, I'm I wouldn't I'm not prepared to push as hard as they were I'm, or as they do you know they, they give it everything and I just it's, it's, fright, it's, fright, it's too frightening I mean I love seeing them giving it their all but what is oh. Yeah, there's, there's no there's no margin for error when you're giving it 110 percent around here. My point is, I was never gonna, I'm never gonna, I was never gonna win. So I'm happy to say, you know, I've I had a good go at it. I did three years. Yeah, did some reasonable lap times, got some reasonable results. 14th in the senior in 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 too bad. That's something they can, I can they can never take that away from me. So and I've still got I'm still alive for one, uh, and I've still got. A, 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 a reasonable out, a reasonable amount of health and fitness, of easily fit enough to come over here and ride a bike like I am now. So, tell you what, it's a lot easier riding along here at 40 miles an hour than it is at 140 miles an hour, bouncing around everywhere like that, trying to trying to cling on for grim death over all these bumps. See this line here? I learnt last year that um, they were they weren't supposed to draw them. But the man, the man driving the line painting machine, forgot to turn the uh, forgot to turn the painting button off. So we dro drove half a mile painting bloody uh, white lines on the road. I wonder if he got the sack. Spent a couple of hours sat there one night on the uh, during the TT last year. Someone, someone had an accident somewhere else around the course and. Um, it was red flag, so we we kind of all congregated there. There was a big group of us sat there and had a cup of tea with the people who own the house there. Sorry, just punched you then, didn't I? Apologies. K tree. If you don't know what the K stands for, it's curb. Watch out for the curb. Because you can't always see it on the approach, but you'll know about it if you hit it. I talked about. You know, getting back on a bike and dispelling any demons I've got. Well, I don't think I had any demons. I think it's all right. I think, I think, um, possibly because I always knew it was going to happen anyway. Maybe it helps that I can't actually remember the accident. I don't have that trauma in, ingrained in me that's, you know, 
gonna keep replaying itself because I can't remember it you can see they're starting to get ready for the um, TT look there's kind of bales getting placed around and some more there six six weeks till the TT something like that so not long and as you can imagine putting um, putting a big event on like the TT but you know closing all the roads and all the all the, all the street furniture and um, crash barriers and stuff it's a big undertaking not something that can happen overnight this is a little bit of road that got resurfaced a few years ago and it's lovely oh beautiful that was really rough before ah right okay well I did think that was gonna happen mountain road closed they did say the mountain road was going to be closed at some point um, they're doing some work up there to tidy some of the road surfaces up so unfortunately we can't do a full lap of the TT course but that's probably three quarters of a lap um, and I feel like that's enough to have kind of I, I'm, I'm back in the game now I feel like I'm there I've done a, I've done a lap of the TT course I've got back on a bike I'm on the Isle of Man the world is my oyster Cheers, mister.